Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. Sometimes we get a lot of players who want to play a particular scenario, and as a result, we sometimes play it twice. This most often happens with one-shots, but in this case, we're doing a full scenario. We will, therefore, be playing another version of Cold Warning. It was written by Scott D. Anielowski, and it was updated to the seventh edition by Oscar Rios and Tim McGonagall. It's available from Golden Goblin Press, and this is version, I mean, this is version two, but it is episode one, and I am the Game Master. So, without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. Our story begins in the winter of 1927. It's February, and the east coast of the United States is covered in a thick blanket of snow, one of the worst winters on record. But that doesn't stop the day-to-day -day activity in Arkham. It just means you have to be a little more careful walking to the general store or crossing the Miskatonic campus. New Englanders are used to it. Shovel snow in the morning to keep it from building up and getting icy, taking care while driving on salted roads to and from work, and shoveling snow again when you get home. The piles of snow on the side of the road build up higher and higher. They compact and blacken with layers of loose asphalt and dirt. It's a good bet that they will last all the way until late spring. On the evening of February 1st, the phone rang at the home of Dr. Jonathan Burke. Hello? Uh, good evening, Dr. Burks. This is Dr. Harrod. How have you been? Oh, I've been very well. How are you, Dr. Harrod? Oh, I'm, I'm quite good. Uh, I, I was wondering if you've been having any difficulties with, uh, with what you came to see me last year for. No? Why do you ask? Have you... No, I just... I, I, you know, I... I I, I under, you understand that I, I'm always in, have concern for your welfare. Uh, the real reason why I'm concerned, but you never come and visit. You never call. You never write. <laughs> well, you know, busy, busy, busy. Uh, the reason why I'm calling uh, has to do with a, a rather disturbing situation I find myself in concerning a former patient. Oh uh, yes. Yeah, would you be would you be available to meet with me tomorrow morning about ten a.m. at my office uh, on West High Street in Arkham? You remember? Yes, I do. Uh, I'll be there. Good. Well, Anything you need me to bring? Oh no, no, just yourself. Uh, I've, I'm looking for your expertise and, and assistance. I'll be there. Excellent. Well, you, you have a pleasant continuation of your evening, and we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Shortly thereafter, on the other side of town, three gentlemen in rumpled suits were sitting in a tiny office on the third floor, overlooking a greengrocer's and a sewing machine repair shop. Aurelia Lopez, a private investigator, and Steve Carroll, a police detective, had been trying to get their little private eye operation off the ground. They had gained a bit of notoriety in Arkham, having solved a number of cases that had baffled the police. Somewhere along the way, they had picked up a third fellow, a man with no formal training in detection, but with a sharp mind and a large knowledge base. Professor Franklin Stamp was a lecturer at Miskatonic University. Anthropology was his field of expertise. He had become involved with the private eyes on a case they had worked a year before. Since then, he had proven himself quite useful to their investigations. He himself enjoyed tagging along and assisting them while trying to stay out of the way of any flying bullets. Garrison Investigations, can I help you? Uh, yeah, uh, 
Good evening, gentlemen. This is Dr. Harrod. You remember me from last year with the, uh, the incident over the Marcus Bishop Stables, no? Yes, Dr. Harrod. We remember you well. How are you, sir? Uh, I'm, I'm doing very well. You? Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, the reason I am calling is I need uh, your help in investigating something that seems to me quite out of place. Uh, uh, would you meet me at my office on West High Street? Uh, it's also my home, you know. I've been unable to travel due to my uh, my gout. Um, would 10 a.m. be okay? Of course it would, sir. Excellent. Excellent. I can offer you a retainer of $10 a day, plus expenses for up to $1 a day for each of you. Would that be sufficient? That'll get us started, sir. Ah, good, good. I, I will discuss uh, it with you in the morning, then. Excellent. We'll see you then. Be done. Thank you. And other than that, the evening was rather uneventful. Early the next morning, at the Baker, Wheeler, and Triveny law firm in Boston, one of the younger associates, Ricky Rand, is called to the desk of Paul Barker. Uh, Ricky, I have a job for you. Uh, what, what now, boss? Uh, looks like, you know, uh, we received some information. Our firm has been contacted by the Moody family, who apparently live on a hog farm somewhere in Missouri. Their eldest daughter, Marilyn, lives in Ockham, Massachusetts, and they've been unable to contact her for a few months due to the winter weather, which makes travel for them impossible. Marilyn's last name is Sutton. Uh, she's married to a Mr. Joseph Sutton. Uh, now they've learned through mutual friends that Mr. Sutton is no longer with us. Uh, apparently, he committed suicide back in December. They don't know the details, and they don't know why she hasn't corresponded or returned any of her calls. More than that, apparently, she's got a bun in the oven. Uh, what? She's pregnant. She's got a kid. She's pregnant, you know. It's so, been a long day. It's so a look, long day. a long day. It's 6.30 in the morning. So... They would like someone to hand deliver a letter to her at her home, and if she's not there, to possibly locate her and find out if she's all right. Basically, I need you to deliver a letter. Do you think you can handle that? Uh, do I really have to deliver a letter? Yeah, yeah. You gotta, you know, if you're gonna want to make it anywhere in this firm, you're gonna need to do some of the grunt work to begin with. So but, we've already booked your train. Your train leaves from Ar for for Arkham in about an hour. Uh, but it's so cold out. Yeah, well, it's cold out. You had to get here after work, didn't you? Quit, quit, quit complaining. Uh, it should get you there. You know, the train should get you there about 1045 this morning. Now, now, you know, if you've got any expenses, keep track of them. With any luck, you should be back by this afternoon. So call me if there's any untoward developments. You understand? Uh, I guess I have no choice. So, yeah, I understand. Good. So, a little while later... As uh, Ricky Rand is traveling on his train trip to Arkham, uh, four other people, the professor, uh, the two detectives, and the doctor, all show up in front of Dr. Harrod's uh, house office, uh, walking up to the front together. Uh, there's three or four steps up. It's, it's like a brownstone. Um, there's a building on, on one side, not on the other. So take it away. You're all in all right. front. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Excellent. Are you here to see the doctor? We are. We are. Um, I'm glad Steve drove though, because this snow is, is getting ridiculous. We, we should have never left where it was warm and nice, and I didn't have to do things like wear 10 layers of clothing to get the mail. But uh, Professor Stamp, it's good to see you again. My, uh, oh, my father Leo, always Leo. speaks highly of you. Don't worry, Leo. This is just a, a brisk, nice East Coast morning. <laughs> Nothing unusual You're, for February. You'll get used to it in time. Lived here most of my life. I'll never get used to it, but thank you. And you must be Dr. Burke. I am, and I'm from Canada, so this is just a summer day for us. Oh, well, uh, very nice. 
I am Professor Stamp. I know I've attended a couple of your uh, public lectures at Miskatonic. Oh, I'm different sorry, department. I, I didn't recognize you then. Very well. Oh well, no reason why you should. I mean, I just attended <laughs> like a public member. And uh, how how did you find it? The, the university that is. Oh, it's very nice. I I occasionally lecture there myself in the in the psychology department, in the oh, medicine. Oh, very good. I've been meaning to, uh, to, to slip down there and uh, sit in on a few lectures myself. I think there's quite a bit for me to learn in that field. There's, we, we do a number of uh, very good lectures for the more educated people. I, I consult with a number of police departments. So um, we talk about uh, missing persons and forensics and the latest coming up in those fields. Of course. Well, I find myself with quite a lot of free time recently. Uh, Professor Freeborn has been taking on a lot more of the anthropology lectures, and uh, which allows me to pursue some of my hobbies, which is what brought me on board with these gentlemen. Oh. Well, come over and, and, and visit. Drop in. We'll have lunch sometime. You've already spoken to Leo here. Uh, sorry, Mr. Lopez. And of course, oh. this is uh, Detective Carroll. Gentlemen. Leo is perfectly fine. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, call me Steve will tell you, we've got, uh, uh, as he'll tell you, we've got, uh, we, we dislike the free time and we have a far better success rate than the police departments do. Excellent. So shall we knock on the door? Of course. There's a sign on the door saying Dr. Dr. Trenton Harrod, psychologist. Uh, Is there a, a bell? There is a bell. Yeah, I'll press the button. All right. Uh, the doorbell rings. And uh, after a few moments, you hear some, what sound like heels on the marble from the inside. And the door opens, and a woman who looks like she's in her mid-50s answers the door. She's dressed very uh, professionally. Uh, she says, yes, may I help you? We have an appointment with Dr. Harrod this morning. Ah, uh, you're the investigators that he's asked about. Please come inside. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mrs. Swain, and I am his secretary. Nice to meet you, Ms. Swain. Please come inside to the, uh, here's a waiting area, and I'll tell the doctor that you're here. It's a very nice office. Um, he's obviously makes quite a bit of money. Um, there's some um, standard art sort of on the walls, very calming sort of things. Um, you can see that there's uh, stairs going up to his private area because this is his home. And you can see, you know, what would be a Nick dining area and so forth on one side. And then he's got the other side of the house sort of turned into his office. Um, uh, after a few minutes, she comes back out to you and she says, the doctor will see you. So you, lie, you stand up, you walk to the door. Uh, she opens the door to allow you to come inside. Dr. Herod's office is a very nice, uh, nice wood-carved uh, bookcases. Uh, he's got a very nice desk. Uh, he's got a, a, what you, I guess you'd call a standard psychologist couch uh, for someone to, to lay on. Uh, he has chairs that seem like they've probably been brought in specifically for your meeting. Uh, you can see that he has an old, I guess it's not that old, an, an Edison uh, machine for recording. Uh, there are a number of shelves above it that have little wax cylinders all lined up that are all labeled. And he says, a uh, gentleman, please come in, please. Please have a seat. Uh, would you all like coffee this morning? It's rather chilly outside. Coffee please. Great. That would be fantastic. Uh, Mrs. Swain, would you please bring us some coffee? And she says, of course, doctor. And she, she leaves. So I'm very glad you've all come. Excellent. Uh, now, I don't know if, uh, if uh, Dr. Uh, Burke, if you know the other three? We've introduced ourselves on the outside. Oh, that's excellent. I, I know the professor vaguely. The other two gentlemen I don't know. But uh, we introduced ourselves. Ah, I see. Excellent. Well, I hope you all had no trouble getting here, no slipping in the ice. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Um, 
Uh, in fact, I think this is one of the worst winters we've had in the, as long as I can remember. Um, so the reason I'm calling you here, uh, Doctor, you're probably wondering why I've called these uh, detectives in. Uh, it's about a patient of mine, uh, Mr. Joseph Sutton. Uh, Mr. Joseph Sutton first started to come to me uh, last July. Uh, he was suffering from extremely disturbing dreams. I, uh, I have been using uh, various forms of hypnosis on him in order to see if we can get to the root of these dreams, you know. Um, he has since then committed suicide or at least that's what the police are telling us. Uh, he committed suicide this last December. But something about the whole thing just doesn't seem right to me. Um, I was treating him. I was seeing him twice a week. There was nothing to indicate at all that he was suicidal. Uh, How did he kill himself? Well, apparently he shot himself in the head. Uh, I was hoping maybe... Uh, uh, maybe Mr. Carroll here could get at least to the root of that since he has connections still with the, the police department. But uh, I'm sure they dropped the case saying that it was a suicide. Was that, was that here in Arkham, Doctor? Yes, yes. It's across town. Um, I haven't been able to reach his wife, which also concerns me a little bit because she's, uh, she was pregnant. And so I that, was, that would be Mrs. Sutton, of course. Yes, Mrs. Sutton. I believe her name is uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, yes. Do they have an address here in Arkham? Uh, yes, they do. Um, what she gives to you. <laughs> um, Doctor, uh, out of curiosity, why did you decide to engage with us instead of the local police? Well, like I say, the police just assumes that it's a suicide. They have far more pressing things to than than investigating such a thing. This might just be a hunch on my part. Uh, was there an autopsy done? Oh, uh, not that I know of, no. Um, I would assume if the man was shot in the head, there wouldn't be much to, to find. Yeah, self, self Suicides are always a suspicious death, though, so they, uh, they would do an autopsy to make sure some other cause had not been... Well, I, I believe there was a note. I don't know what it said. Mm. Uh, it's in the it's in the hands of the police. Um, uh, it's quite it's quite disturbing. I think also that there may be maybe some other other extenuating circumstances because of the nature of his dreams and 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 we were we were trying to work out what they could mean. You know, they have subliminal they have different uh, meanings. Uh, uh, Doctor Burke, you you are a big fan of Jung, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you understand this. Uh, you and Freud uh, saying that uh, dreams have some meaning. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's cigars, just as cigars, you say. Um, were, there, were there common themes that you were seeing? Well, he seemed to have an aversion to this, the ice and snow. Who doesn't? But uh, in his case, there was an incident much earlier in his life when he was a child. Uh, he was... Uh, he was he was a big fan of hunting. Uh, his whole family liked to hunt. Um, his father took him out hunting one day, and they were caught in a storm. And the and the result was that his father actually passed away, uh, and he only managed to survive barely. He was rescued. Uh, he had severe frostbite, and I believe well I know he he lost his right hand. Uh, he was always very careful to sort of hide it, you know, very self-conscious about it. It doesn't matter to me, but uh, so I can understand the fear of cold. But then there's another part of it. I, I guess I'd, I'd, I'd rather not say it's a, a bit of a delicate matter, you know. But Doctor, I, I think that anything you can share with us to give us a leg up on finding this gentleman, or well, not finding this gentleman, but finding his wife and possibly unborn child would be. Well, I, I, 
great important. I think, I think from some of the clues that he suspected that his brother was, for instance, probably stooping his wife. <clears throat> um, I'm not sure that that's true, but well, as I say, we were working towards a breakthrough of trying to figure out his, his thing. You know, I, I, I record these sessions. Um, let me see. I can, I can I play one for you uh, on my Edison machine. He reaches Did up on the Did you say, shelf. Dr. Herod, that you believe his brother was sleeping with his wife or that he expressed to you? I, I think that that's where he was going with it. I think he was thinking that that might be the case. I, well. I, I told him that not to make any conclusions, that, you know, dreams are not always what they appear. We all have internal conflicts and fears. And uh, sometimes those manifest themselves. It's not necessarily true, but what was his anything. brother's name? Uh, Stuart. Stuart Sutton, I believe. Yes. Now here, let me put this on, and he fiddles with the uh, the Edison machine, and he uh, he begins it playing. This is Dr. Ha uh, Trenton Harrod of uh, Arkham, Massachusetts. Today's date is December fifteenth. 1926. I'm here with my patient, Dr. Mr. Joseph Sutton, who is suffering from extreme nightmares and possibly some form of chematophobia, fear of the cold. I have once again placed Mr. Sutton into a mesmeric state in order to help him recollect the details of his dreams and possibly unlock their cause. This will be our ninth session. Now, Joseph, this is Dr. Harrod. Can you hear me? You should feel completely relaxed and safe. Nothing can harm you. Do you feel safe and comfortable? Yes. Good. Now, I want you to think back to last night. You went to bed. The bed is soft and warm. You feel rest, relaxation, soften everything around you. And soon you drift off into the land of dreams. The dream begins. Tell me how you feel, what you see. It's cold, very cold. The sky is black and, and full of stars. The wind is howling, it, 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 it's loud, like screaming. My ears explode with the screams of the wind. It rips my body, and my skin burns with the cold, and then, then goes numb. I, I can feel my lungs start to freeze inside my chest. And I'm gasping for air. My, my head is throbbing and my blood is turning to ice. I, I, can, skin, I, I, I can see my skin blackening. There's something else here. There's great wings in the sky. There's a lot of stars. I, I try to run, but the snow is so deep. I'm barely moving. It, it, it's coming. And there are things in the snow and I, I see claws grab at me and they're, they're going to hold me in place then there's a noise <laughs> Joseph, Joseph, Joseph. It's Dr. Harrod I need you to calm down it's all just a dream it can't hurt you, calm, calm down quiet, quiet try and observe the dream but remember it can't harm you it's a shadow, a phantasm now then, you were trapped in the snow continue how do you feel? I can't, can't feel anything. I feel numb. There are faces in the darkness, in the wind, but, but they're blurry. I can't really make them out. But they are moving closer. I don't think they're human at all. They're, they're demons of ice and snow. I feel pinned down. I can feel the pressure of the ice on me, keeping me in place. I think I can see Marilyn. One of the faces is Marilyn? No. The faces are getting closer, but Marilyn is like me, pinned in the ice. There's someone else. Get your hands off my wife! She's is howling. The stars are all gone. Someone's calling out my name. Someone is calling me. I see blood everywhere, staining the snow red. 
I scream. Marilyn! Stop it! Stop it! The sky is laughing at me. I can see two red stars burning in the sky. Calm down, calm down. So you see, it's quite uh, an unusual case in his, his son's fourth form of delusion, fear of the cold. He doesn't. He doesn't say anything in that testimony about his wife cheating on him. I mean, the images are of her being as trapped as he is. Yeah, it's someone yeah. doing something to her. It it was more what he was piecing together in his own mind. Hmm. I don't know if he felt any great jealousy towards his brother, but uh, he never spoke of him in that way. Doctor, were the, were the dreams always like that, or did the narrative ever evolve? It always involved him being very cold, feeling the ice. He always felt as if people were watching him. Uh, they didn't always include Marilyn, but... Uh, Always a sort of intense fear of something in the snow and ice. But they always followed the same basic format? Yeah, yeah. It was quite unusual to have the same dreams, or very similar dreams, yeah. So, in your field, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you see cases that are odd or disturb people all the time. What about this got you so worried? Because he didn't seem suicidal. There's nothing to indicate it, you know. As far as I know, his wife and his brother, they are just, you know, wife and brother. I'll be interested to see what you can turn up, Steve, with the police, because the the, the events are really suspicious. Well, Well, I... Not just around the death, right? Uh, Doctor, did he talk about his father's death? In any great detail? Not in any great detail. It happened when he was young. Uh, He didn't remember everything. He certainly doesn't remember what happened. Uh, uh, He remembers being with his father, and he remembers being rescued barely. Uh, Remembers that he didn't have a hand after that. Mm -hmm. Um, Or a father. Now, I've spoken. I, I, I went to the funeral. Uh, it was uh, what you'd expect. Um, I uh, and and at that time I met Marilyn there, uh, and I met uh, uh, the brother uh, Stuart. I didn't uh, I didn't really think. I didn't really put anything together in my head at the time. Uh, I didn't formulate my ideas. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Sutton uh, has a hunting lodge, uh, which I believe is in Maine, up uh, up uh, not too far from Bangor. Uh, he gave me uh, an address. Let me find, see if I can find it. Uh, he was rather reluctant at first, I believe. Uh, he was uh, possibly trying to comfort uh, Miss Mrs. Sutton. Um, I don't know if they went up there together. Uh, that's why you need to check the apartment. Uh, here's the note. Uh, here, let me hand it to you, Dr. Burke. Maybe you can read it out loud. Dr. Burke, are you frozen, Dr. Burke? Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> the address. Stuart Sutton, Winter Haven Hunting Lodge, 30 miles north of Bangor. Closest town is Hudson in Penos. Don't know it, county. If you need to leave me a message, ask the operator for Hudson 154. This is the general store where I get messages in mail. Yeah. This is a good sign. When Dr. Burke starts to do that, it means that he is uh, he's, already deeply thinking about what's going on. His noodle is, is under uh, man, man, whatever. <laughs> Tell me, Dr. Howard, with this ridiculous cold that we've been having, were they able to actually inter the body? 
I don't believe so. It's probably put into the, you know, the keeper on the side of the, the funeral. The, the, you know, they have the, the little hills. The crypt. Doors, yeah, the little crypts that are outside. Oh. Perhaps we could still check the body and see if there's anything remarkable about it. I don't know. You might have to get a county warrant for something like that. Can um, I ask you, Dr. Herod? Uh, Mr. Carroll is very persuasive. The brother, uh, was he an older brother or a younger brother? I, I believe he's older. older Not brother? by much, though. Maybe younger. It's hard to tell. You don't know. Very well. That's good. Do you know what he does for his profession? No, I don't. Um, no, we can maybe get that from the police, but I thought I'd ask you first. Now, now, Joseph, I believe, was a banker. Joseph was a banker? Yeah. Okay. Uh, one last question for me, uh, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry, Dr. <coughs> Herod. Um, do you happen to know uh, Joseph? Was he a religious man? I don't actually know. I never spoke about God or church or anything like that. You never asked him as his... Um, psychologist i i don't usually like to put anything forward onto a patient i let them talk i, I, I understand uh, i'm sorry to have pressed it, it gives me well it gives me a tell you know if he never speaks of anything religious then i just wonder because he mentioned uh in the recording you played for us he, he thought he saw demons in the snow oh yeah i don't know what that means i mean Monsters, creatures, demons, faces. Thank, thank you, Doctor. Good, good point, Doctor Stamp. Mister Carroll, why are you just wandering around my office like that? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't know if there's background noise bleeding through, but I thought I'd relocate. Um. Yeah. So, gentlemen, you know, I can, uh, I, I have already discussed with, uh, with Mr. Uh, with, um, uh, Aurelio uh, and uh, Mr. Carroll about uh, a fee. Uh, Dr. Burke, I can, I can offer you, uh, you know, the $10 a day. Of course. I'm more interested in an interesting case than I am in cash. All right. Well, then that's good. Um, the the uh, the Sutton residence is uh, five ninety four Crane Street. Uh, that's over in the campus district. Okay. Could I use your phone and call um, and and call the hospital to see if a, an autopsy was done, or to see if I could get a chance to look at the body? Um. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So I'll I'll call the I'll call the the main hospital, introduce myself, say that myself and some colleagues have been hired to look into this situation, and we wondered if there was an official autopsy report that they could give us. If not, would it be possible for us to go to the funeral home and perhaps have a look at the body in cold storage? Well, there's no there's no autopsy. Um. Uh, the report showed that he had uh, shot himself in the head, and uh, there was really no, you know, there's there's a there's a police report, uh, but nothing, uh, mm -hmm. no, no kind of autopsy was done. Uh, he is uh, currently see this all happened in December, so it's been almost two months, maybe a month and a half. But if he's been in if he's been in a building that is not that is kept cold. Should be relatively. Well, actually, at the, the he's being buried in the Bolton Cemetery. Uh, they actually have, in the Bolton Cemetery, they have little, I don't know what they're actually called, but it's basically, there's like holes where there's places where they could put the bodies because it's freezing cold outside. They're going to wait until spring before they yeah. put the body. So they're just, they're not refrigerated. They're naturally refrigerated. Yes. So. I, I'm aware there would be some decomposition. But. Yeah. Um, well, I, um, uh, 
he or she, I didn't say, uh, tells you that it, that it's possible if you can get a, you know, a writ, writ from a reason for, for doing it, a legal reason for doing it, hmm. which you should be able to do. Yes. If only we knew a lawyer. Yes. <laughs> right. uh, and, and I will certainly uh, go down to the police station and talk to my old friend, Detective Smith, and see what, if I can get a look at the police report. Okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, I've given you a task. Uh, I'm not going to say enjoy yourselves, but I know you like solving a mystery. Um, you know, keep me informed if anything unusual happens. This is a very strange case. I don't know what's going on in the background. It's very strange. But since this is Arkham, so. <laughs> All right. Strange is just Monday. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, if you think of anything that might be of assistance or anything particularly odd that jumps out, let us know. Of course, of course. Now, gentlemen, if you'll allow me, uh, I'll show you through the door. And you can see that he limps. Um, he obviously has, he's, he, he, you can see from his facial expression that he's in a lot of pain. Um, you, you sit down. We can show ourselves out, Doctor. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Take care of that leg. And uh, when you open up the door, Miss Swain sort of op goes, goes over and opens up the other door for you. All right, so you've stepped back out into the icy cold winter in Arkham. So shall we go see whether we can talk to the family? Is the first step, or did you want to go and see what we can find behind the scenes before we do that? Um, well, sure how much we're going to get out of a police report other than it sounds like they assumed it was an open and shut case. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm looking forward to details like was it, was he found in a locked room or some, you know, mysterious thing like that. Um, right. Even in their ineptitude, Steve, report. you know that they might, uh, they might have something that, that will be revealing. Besides, I don't uh, do well with the Weeping Widow sort of uh, interview so well. Uh, do you guys want to, uh, do we want to go together? I'll, I'll talk to her. I have no problem. I would be interested in uh, talking to the family as well. I would accompany you, Dr. Burke. Okay. All right. And Stephen and I will work with the, the police department and... Uh, we can uh, either take a look at the body afterwards and see what we know from our experience, or we could bring uh, Dr. Burke and Stamp along, or Professor Stamp. Um, we should after. Afterwards. Yeah, that actually sounds like a great idea. Beautiful. Okay. Get All right, so if I understand, Dr. Burke and Dr. Stamp are going to the house. And, yes. You uh, flatter me. It's just Professor Stamp. I never got my PhD. Professor. Thank you, though. And uh, Car uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Carol, uh, the, the investigators are going to go to the police. All right. So as you cross town, uh, Dr. Burke and uh, Professor Franklin, uh, as you're pulling up to the front of the house, and it's a fairly nice little bungalow sort of house, uh, two stories high. Um, it looks like at one point it was probably a single dwelling, but it's been modified in such a way that there's a tenant upstairs and a tenant downstairs. Um, just as you guys are stepping up to this, this step, a car pulls up with uh, Mr. Ricky Rand, the lawyer, who gets out looking very nice in his uh, suit. Good morning. Who, who are you two? Dr. Burke. Professor Franklin Stamp, and you are? Uh, Ricky Rand, lawyer. I'm here to uh, deliver a letter to Mrs. Sutton. Oh, well, we're also here to see Mrs. Sutton. We can walk up together. Oh. Well, 
lawyers. Yeah, let's do it then. Uh, a, a lawyer, you say? Yeah, a lawyer. I'm kind of in, I'm in my early stages, so kind of get this grunt work like delivering letters. You're a criminal lawyer and you've only completed the criminal part? Yeah. <laughs> so, so go up and ring the doorbell. Yeah. Let's. So you go up to the front porch. Uh, you can see that, uh, of course, the yard, I, I wouldn't say the yard's in a bad condition because it's covered under two feet of snow. Um, the house itself looks like it's in pretty good shape. Uh, looks like uh, the Suttons probably have some money. Uh, he was a banker. Uh, you ring the doorbell and nothing happens. There's no answer. Uh, you also notice that most of the curtains are at least partly closed. They're, they're sheer, so you can sort of see through them a bit. You can see that there is furniture. There doesn't seem to be any lights on. I will try an old trick that I learned from hanging out with uh, Leo and Steve, and I'll check to see if the door is locked. Okay. Uh, you jiggle the door, it's locked. Damn. Well, God, let's damn. try the back door. <laughs> okay. Can you hear us? Hang, hang on, I'm just going to bang on the door louder. So I just bang on the door. Um, as you bang on the door, uh, a voice suddenly comes down from somewhere up above and it says, uh, they're not there. And you look up and there's a, a, a gentleman standing on the little balcony outside the front of the upstairs apartment. Hello? He says, yeah, they're not there. Who are you? Who am I? Uh, my name is... Gary, Gary Webb. Hi, Mr. Webb, do you know where they are? Well, I'm not really sure. Um, there were, you know, it's not really any of my business, but you know, they, uh, the, the lady who lived here, her husband... Uh, Killed himself. Yeah. And uh, what are you guys, did you see a lawyer? Well, I am. I'm here to deliver a letter to to Mrs. Well, Sutton. I mean, I might know something, but uh, hold on. Let me come down. Yeah, please. Let us in. It's freezing cold out here. Well, he actually comes down an outside stair staircase uh, over towards the side. You you realize so much that for going in for hot chocolate. You can see a place where the snow is uh, cut cut back so that he can get around there. He Gentlemen, comes, it's, it's, it's really cold. You want to come and sit in my car? Mr. Webb, I have... Uh, well, actually, I, you know, we can go inside. I do have the key. Oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, excellent. Cool. Um, you know, and, and he opens up the door. Uh, he says, come on inside. It's still kind of chilly in here because we're not heating the bottom. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Are you the owner of the building? No. Uh, I just, they, uh, well, Mrs. Uh, Sutton and uh, her brother-in-law, I guess he is. Uh, Stuart. They decided that they were going to have to leave for a while, and they left the key with me in case something happened. And do you know where they're gone? I, I really don't. Did, did, did you happen to see them leave? Uh, I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Did, did she seem okay? Yeah, she's, she's pregnant. Yeah. But she seemed like she was going willingly and. Oh, yeah, yeah. He had a, he had a, you know, coat around her. Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, any, any idea how, how pregnant she is? Oh, I don't know. Like yeah. really big? Uh, just a little bit big? She's pretty big. Okay. So, you know, I don't really know. I'm not married. I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a musician, you see. I, I play. Yeah, a musician. What do you play? I play the sax. 
Ah, cool. So, anyways, if you need to look around, uh, yeah, I would like. Should to know I, should I like ask for your credentials, you guys, with the police at all? You got a badge number or something that uh, you know? I uh, want you. I show my federal uh, ID. You can ring my uh, law firm. All right. Well, you know, just don't break anything. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't swipe anything or anything like that. You're welcome to stay and watch us. We're just going to take a quick look around. Before all right. We... All right. You probably want to lock up when we leave anyway. Yeah. Hey. Well, I'm going to, I need to find out where they're gone. He just sort of moves over and, and sits down. Sort of uh, I, I start looking around. Cause I want to. I need to find out where they've gone. Now it looks like a place that's been lived in. There are, you know, uh, f furniture that you'd expect. Uh, there's no food in the kitchen. Uh, there's a mantelpiece in the fireplace with uh, pictures all over it. There's no food in the kitchen. Has the place been closed down? In other words, like they weren't leaving in a hurry. They got rid of the food. And well, it looks like that. There's no perishables. Okay. Uh, you know, there's no milk or anything like that. Right. There's no milk, but is there any coffee? Actually, there probably is coffee. I'll put on a kettle then. All right. Dr. Franklin, I have something much better than coffee, and I hand him a flask. Hey, um, Professor Stamp, uh, Dr. Burke, is, um, what, do you, what, what are you professor and a doctor in? I'm kind of curious. I'm a doctor, doctor. You're a doctor, doctor. Yeah, oh. medical doctor. Now you're one of you're one of the smart ones. Well, I guess I'm quite smart to be honest, but you know, different kind of smart. Different fields. Yeah. And I'm a professor of anthropology over at Miskatonic University. Yeah, anthropology. That's quite interesting. To some. I bet you've seen quite a lot of uh, weird weird shit. Oh, definitely. Yeah, that's why I uh, prefer the cultural side of the profession. Yeah. It's interesting the things you'll learn if you just open your eyes to different points of view. I'm always open to a different point of view. Oh, yes. People in your trade are known for that. Yeah. Got to stay, gotta stay on your toes. You said you're a young lawyer, so. Yeah. Yeah. Only really just properly got my degree and everything. So, do you have a specialty? Not really. I'm kind of just I'm kind of working my way through the law firm. So. Oh, do you have a business card at least? Oh uh, yeah, here you go. I'll, I'll pass. Hey, uh, I I I moonlight uh, as a consultant with a, a private investigation firm. Sometimes they have need of, uh, you know legal services. So perhaps I could make a reference for you. Well, if you can help me find uh, Mrs. Sutton, then uh, I'll be happy to help you if you come into any uh, legal troubles. That is something I think we could definitely uh, work together on. Yeah. Well, let's take a look around. Right. We're not going to find her by just standing. Yeah, go ahead. I just want to get this coffee made. Do you want some? There's no milk. It'll have to be black. Hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah, fine. That's fine by me. So the main area that you're standing in, um, you've got the kitchen on one side, um, it seems rather formal. Uh, Dr. Burke, you discovered that there's a den on one side with uh, some books lining the walls. There's a desk. Uh, you go over to the desk and you don't really find anything unusual, except you do find uh, a note with once again uh, the uh, the Winter Haven Lodge up in the north written down on it. Um, who's looking around the living room? All right, Ricky. Uh, you're looking around the living room. There's a lot of pictures on the mantelpiece, and one of the pictures that you find is this. Wow. 1887 on the back. Me and Papa hunting squirrels in Maine. Wow. I'm assuming this is uh, James, maybe? I don't know. Cute kid. 
I uh, show it to whoever else is in the room with me. Okay. I'm going to go and, and check uh, the bathroom and the medicine cabinet. Okay. Um, in there, you don't find anything that you wouldn't expect. Um, any any sense of how how pregnant she is is what I'm I'm looking for. Like sometimes people put up charts and stuff like that. Um, do a do a luck roll. Yep, thirty five out of forty. If there is. And I don't know what would indicate it, but you're guessing that maybe she was about six or seven months pregnant uh, when she left. Whatever, whatever would indicate something like. So that. when did the doctor start his? So did we think to ask is when the doctor started his counseling? Uh, July. So that's before. Okay. So, um, uh, Ricky, you're looking around. Uh, yeah. Professor Stamp, what are you doing? Trying to hit the mute button. Uh, is there a ice box? An ice box in the freezer? Or in, there is sorry, in there the is. Uh, kitchen. Yeah, there is. I'll take a look in there to see what's in what he's got in the ice box. Nothing perishable, but uh, you know whatever would be in the refrigerator condiments or. Oh, okay. Now, since he was a hunter, I thought he might have like lots of meat or something stocked up in the, in the, in the ice box or anything of that sort. Well, Stuart is the hunter, Joseph. Well, Joseph likes to hunt, but Arkham's there's not much hunting right in Arkham. Right. Yeah. No, fair enough. Ricky, do a spot hidden. 46. That's a pass out of six, five. Yeah. Okay. You also run across this picture. To Joseph, far the best for college, stay in touch, your loving brother Stuart. Wow. It look quite similar. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So you guys are looking around the house. Um, Steve and Aurelio, you uh, have arrived at the police department. And, of course, everybody recognizes you. Hey, how you guys doing? What can I do for you folks today? Great. Is uh, Detective Smith around? Yeah, Detective Smith. Your friends are here. Hey, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. Listen, uh, I want to see if you can help me on a bit of a case. You guys have an old file a couple months old. A suicide job. I wondered if you could uh, let me take a peek at it. Oh, the, yeah, let me see. What's the name? Sutton. Sutton. Joseph Sutton. Yeah, here it is. Uh, yeah, I guess the guy blew his head, blew his brains out. Uh, what do you want to know? Well, let's uh, start with the circumstances of the body. He was at home. It was what? Uh, he was at home. He was in the front room. Uh, he was a shot. He shot himself in the head with a forty-five uh, revolver. Uh, he obviously was dead instantly. Uh, uh, Self-inflicted bullet wound. Uh, there was a suicide note uh, saying that they regretted, you know, dying. He was shooting himself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Powder uh, burns around the wound? Oh, yeah. 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 All around his, you know, you know on his, uh, uh, yeah. So it was close. All right side of his face was, you know, practically blown. 45 was a lot of damage. Well, they, they do, but only exiting. I was thinking about more about the entrance side. Well, you know, he could have held it maybe about here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he pushed it up against his head, but, you know. And he shows you some 
they of course took some photographs. They're pretty gruesome. Yeah. It shows him lying on the floor. It shows the, uh, the, you know, the, the police around the, uh, uh, but you can see the whole right hand side of his face, you know, is blown off. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. So obviously, obviously the entrance wound, entrance wound from here. And coming out. We think he was left-handed then. I don't know what kind of hand he was. But I mean, that means he used his left hand to blow his head off if the right hand side of his face was gone. I don't know. Huh. I ain't no I ain't no detective. Yeah. Uh so the uh and the wife found him? Oh yeah, yeah. That's terrible. Like I can I can show you the note. I can show you the note if you want to see. That'd be good. Yeah, let me take right. a look at that. Yeah, it's in this uh this little plastic Ziploc bag. Uh-huh. It's an anomaly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> why don't you read that out loud so that everybody sorry knows. i can't go on any longer forgive my beautiful wife forgive me my beautiful wife and my loving brother joseph yeah see so yeah, suicide note um tom can i ask does that handwriting look like a lefty I'll say no. Okay. I got my first set of problems with this case. And I, I want to I want to clarify something in case I misled you in some way. The gun was used on the right hand side of his head. Okay, so the left side was yeah. what was destroyed. Right. The the entrance was on the right hand side. On the right hand side. Okay. All right. So Darn, you've just destroyed my whole theory that somebody else did it. Did I? <laughs> okay. well, okay. so, no, he's well, missing that, his right. He was one, missing yeah. his right hand. Ah, uh, thank you. That's the prospect. Thank you so much. Well done, Doctor. Doctor Burke, you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, I, I will uh, ask about anything else strange about the body. I mean, in the picture, is there, uh, can you see the right stump? Uh, you can't in the picture. Uh, and is the gun in the picture so that it was like placed next to the, I mean, next near the uh, hand? It does, it does. And it looks like the, the gun is in his left hand. Yeah. Okay, well, that's, uh, confirmation thank you so i think leo has some experience with handwriting analysis is there a way that i can uh determine if uh if it was written by a right or left-handed person um maybe i mean it's you, you need some more examples of his handwriting gotcha well oh. you you might be able to find something like that on bills and and things in his house, okay. records. Okay. All right. And does the police report mention if they've recovered any other shell casings from the house? Uh, none. None at all, or no extra ones? Uh, no, 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 there was just one fought, shot fired. All right. Other than that, you don't really find anything. Uh, okay. And now that you've sort of seen pictures of the body, you're not really sure that you would need to exhume it. It looks pretty much like exactly what it was, a gunshot wound to the head. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. And then are you going to travel yeah. over to the house? Yeah, we'll, we'll head over there to meet back up with the gang. All right. So you arrive back at the house. Uh, the others are all looking around, trying to find anything interesting, and you rejoin them. Yeah, if I could say, Tom, after um, 
making coffee and everything and looking through the ice box, et cetera, I would have probably personally been looking around the house for any uh, religious paraphernalia and also any books that they might have. Um, okay. I think Professor Stamp's interest would be to what kind of people they were, what their religion might have been. All right. Cultural notes, of course. There are quite a few books uh, in that little den area, uh, but they all have, they're all really inane. Uh, the, one, the only technical ones would be on banking and, uh, and financing and accounting, things like that. Um, there are two, uh, there's also a, like a little rack with, with smoke, with pipes and the things that you'd expect from a, from, in a regular, normal, everyday house. Uh, there are two bedrooms, the doors of which at the moment are closed. Uh, and and is there a desk or something we can take a look at for the some? The desk is in the den. Okay. Uh, there is. There are quite a lot of papers, correspondence, letters, and things like so that. So we'll want to just take a look to confirm he was actually using his one hand to write with, but that it matched the what we remember of the note. Well, do a, do a spot hidden roll for me, or rather uh, Aurelio, you have handwriting analysis, did you say? Yeah. Why don't you roll that? Uh, which ones do I want to roll for that? Um, I guess intelligence would make sense. As you're doing that, I go, who the hell are you two? <laughs> who the hell? Sorry. Um, uh, Rodriguez and Carol, private detectives. Yeah, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant to introduce you, uh, Miss, Mr. Rand. Uh, these are the investigators I was telling you about that I, that I work with. This yeah. is uh, Mr. Uh, sorry, did you say it was Richard Rand? Yeah, most people call me Ricky, so Ricky. I guess you can as well. And I'll, I'll hand his card over to Steve that he gave me earlier. I'll yeah, and I'll, for I'll, I'll, and I'll hand, hand Ricky one of our cards. Yeah. Cool. I kind of just... Uh -huh. just back pocket. Anyway, right. can, what are you doing? Uh, how did you do, Aurelio? Um, so this is one of those times... Uh, Got my the character sheet up. Okay. Uh, just uh, need to know which ones to roll for it. Uh, INT and intelligence. At the top. Right, but I meant which die. Oh, I'm sorry. You roll uh, the two ten-sided dice, and what that's going to give you is a percentage, and you want to get under the number. Ah, gotcha. Okay. And yep, so it's a uh, fifty-seven. Okay, so what what is your intelligence? Eighty. Eighty. Okay. So now, when you look at that number, you've got the big number, which mm -hmm. is if you if you get uh, under that number, that's a pass. That's if right. you get under the next number, which is a little lower, then it's a hard pass. That means you did really well. And if you get under the final number, the tiny number, that's an extreme. That means you you really did well. Yeah, no, it's just a it's just a break. Okay. Yeah. Can you right. tell us what you found out at the police station? Uh, yes, very interesting. Um, <clears throat> the uh, so Joseph Sutton's uh, was miraculously killed. Uh, uh, committed suicide using his right hand. Oh, sorry, he doesn't have a right hand, um, and. Uh, but it was ruled, uh, despite the gun being next to his left hand and the right side of his, uh, the bullet entered on the right side of the head. So, uh, I think this was murder, not suicide. Which is not possible. Not at the angle. Correct. The gun in the left hand. You're not going to swing Which, around. The your best head. you would blow at the back of your head first as right. a doctor. Right. And this was definitely, the pictures were very clear. It was from the side. Yeah. Um, so he, he, he did not kill himself. I mean, he didn't kill himself. Somebody killed him. Um, 
there was a note, uh, and I'd like to take a look at a desk and some of the other papers around just to see if the handwriting looks anything like it. Well, it's exactly what Aurelio has done. He's grabbed the, he brought the note with him. Uh, he's grabbed some of the photographs, some of the papers, and he's laid them all down on the table. So uh, here you have the suicide note. And then you have uh, the forwarding address. And you have the photograph. You have the second photograph. And you are pretty sure that those are the signatures of the two men. And if you look at the way Joseph writes his name. Yeah, very definitely. That's Stuart's writing. Yeah, it doesn't match Joseph's writing at all. So I would like to go and check the bedrooms, particularly the married bedroom. All right. Uh, you go into the the married bedroom. I'm going to assume that you opened up both doors to figure out yes. which. Um, you open up the door to the, the bedroom, and you notice it, it's a bed. Uh, it's got, you know, dressers on the side. Uh, it doesn't have a closet. It's a little old, too old of a building to have built-in closets. It's got uh, a wardrobe. Uh, do a spot hidden for me. Whoever went in. Oh, spot hidden? Yeah. Nope. Okay. So you're, you're looking around. You uh, look into the drawers. You look into the closet. Nothing seems unusual. Obviously, look underneath the mattress. Uh, you lift up the mattress and you look, there's nothing there. Uh, you do find uh, that there has been clothing removed, probably by Mrs. Sutton when she left. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? So, so sorry, there's uh, the bedroom they're in right now is like a double bed. It's, it's like a, well, yeah, they probably didn't have king size. It's probably double. No, but like a double. And then the other bedroom has like a single no, bed. No, the in other it. bedroom, when you open up that door, it looks like they were fixing it up to be a nursery. Oh, oh, break my heart. Okay. Your cold Massachusetts heart. <laughs> hey, hang on. Any Anyone, um, I kind of just want to ask, do any of you know if they have a hunting lodge or anything? Yeah, we have an address to go Act. to. Yeah. Because yeah, I have a feeling that might be a good place. They might have gone hunting lodge far away. Sure, yeah. It's up uh, north of Bangor, I believe. Yeah. You know north something of... that might be a good idea to check on? Have we reached out to their bank yet? And seeing if suddenly their account's gone to zero. We can see. You definitely have all the financial records here at the desk. Oh, Steve is a detective. I'd like you to search the rooms. I mean, I'm a medical doctor. I'm not a. Yeah. Yeah. Let the investigators search the rooms. <clears throat> I'll let Leo do a, do the accounting. <laughs> well, I'm pretty good with um, you know. Paperwork and such. Same. I'm, yes, I'm pretty good at paperwork. Maybe uh, Ricky and I can go through the papers and see if we can find any information from the banks while you search the rooms. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, why not? Uh, you know that he worked for Bank of the United States. You find that almost immediately. Uh, you see his regular paychecks. They're, they're good. Looks like he's getting paid for what he does. Um, after, I'm going to say it's going to take you at least half an hour, 45 minutes of looking through them. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. It looks like they pay their bills. It looks like and they're not rich, but they're not poor either. But also not like a uh, withdrawal slip for an unusually yeah. large amount or anything. It doesn't look like they withdrew anything. Hmm. Uh, not based on the papers we have here, at least. Right. 
Um, uh, Leo, you're looking around. Uh, you're double checking the rooms. Do a spot hidden for me. Same way to roll. If you want to get under the number. Your character sheet is laid out. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so that is a 21. And spot hidden is 51. It's, uh, it's a hard. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you're looking around. First, you don't really see anything unusual, uh, but then you notice that you think you see something uh, that at first you think is under the bed, but you then realize that it's not under the bed. It's, it's in the carpet. There seems to be some sort of a stain, uh, a, dis a dark discoloration uh, where on one side of the bed, on the, on the, the right-hand side of the bed, Right about where you would expect, you know, somebody's the main part of somebody's body, right? Right off the thing. Uh, when you lift the the, the cover, uh, you notice that there are some really nasty looking stains on the sheets. Uh, they're dark. Uh, they're you've seen blood enough to know what blood would look like. Blood would be very brown. This is, this could be blood, but it's very black. And as you pull back the sheets farther, you can see that whoever laid on this side of the bed, there's large black stains on right about where your, your hip would be. What does my medical knowledge tell me it is? Well, is he gonna, is, are you in the room? Yeah, I'm around. Yeah, when you see it, you go over and you see it. Um, do a uh, do a medical. Yep, hard one. Well, you you go up to it and you look. And I've got a medical bag, but I don't know how much would be in it. Uh, probably just to treat people, mm. and you probably left it in the in the car. Uh, but in any case, your immediate first thought is blood. But then when you look closer, it's the wrong color. It's a little too dark, a little too, maybe there's a greenish tinge to it, in fact. Um, you lean, you, you're a doctor, you lean over and you smell it. And it doesn't smell like blood. It's got a strong vinegary sort of smell to it. Uh, very pungent, almost like... Um, I don't know, like uh, vomit, but doesn't really smell like vomit either. You're not sure what it is. Uh, from the placement on the bed, you're guessing that it might be some sort of discharge from Marilyn if she slept on this side of the bed. Any, like, am I aware of any common discharge from pregnant women that would look like this? No. no. I mean, women sometimes bleed during their pregnancy. Yeah, they don't bleed green, though. <laughs> it's really very strange here. I'm going to take, uh, uh, I'm going to, if I have to, I'll go get the bag, but I'm going to go and take a piece of this. And it's, it's soaked in and dried, so you'd have to cut out a piece. I am. I'm going to cut a piece out of the mattress yeah. and, and take it. Because uh, I can send it to a lab and find out what it is. You probably find scissors somewhere in the house, on the, at the desk or something like that. So, yeah, you're able to cut out a maybe a one foot square piece of it. Uh, and, it also has kind of an oily texture. It's dry, but it's definitely got got an oily sort of dish, which is nasty. Top. And it looks like it came so, out. Came out of her nether regions versus her head? Well, it's not up near the head. It's definitely no. middle of the bed. Yeah. Middle of the bed. Um, and, and from looking at the, 
uh, papers who've been looking through, what is like the latest dated paper that they seem to have? Well, it looks behind? like it looks like uh, that up until uh, December, their bills have been paid by Joseph. Uh, mm -hmm. After that, uh, nothing's been paid. Uh, it doesn't look like they have a, a large accumulation of anything, but there's been nobody here to pay. I don't okay. think Carolyn knew how to pay. But I mean, so the, it's been a good month. At least. Maybe two, and this stuff is still kind of oily. Yeah. This Do, isn't that seem weird, Doctor? Very. Is there a basement to this house, a there storage are. area? Yeah, there would be a, a basement. All right, I'm taking a torch with me into the basement. And on our, I, is, does the basement go from this building or do we have to go outside to get to the basement? There, there is access from the outside, but there is also a, a door in this room. Oh, also, okay. It's a small door going down into the basement. Uh, I'm going to go over to the musician. Mm -hmm. um, how long ago have they been gone? When did they leave? Oh, I'd say they left maybe uh, uh, two weeks ago, maybe. Damn. Uh, she was she was acting strange, you know. There were times when she she was an unusual woman. Strange, how? Well, you know, I I get in late usually because uh, I I go uh, I I perform down in Arkham at the uh, the the Pink Oboe, and uh, I'd sometimes come home at oh maybe three o'clock in the morning, and uh, at least two times. I caught Marilyn out in the backyard, just standing in the snow, in her, oh, yeah. in her nightgown. I had to help her back into the house. She seemed kind of like she was out of it. I, so, talked, to, I talked to her yeah. husband about it, and uh, I don't know what he was doing about it. So she was sleepwalking? Yeah, yeah, she was sleepwalking. What did are they called? How, how did she look when she was out there? Well... Right? She just looked like she was looking off into outer space. I'm surprised as hell she didn't get frostbite, but she didn't. Right. Well, Can you show us in the yard where she was standing? Sure. And he just, he walks you towards the back door, which has a window in it. And he says, she was standing like right over there by that tree. I'm, I'm going to go. Because there's, four, there's two feet of snow, but. I kind of want to go take a look. I can oh. just. Dig my way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's a there's a snow shovel right there. Help yourself. Yeah, might be a little okay. crusty. Yeah, it'll be fun. I go out and I try to find like dig around the area. You said. All right, so you start digging your way over there. It's going to take you at least fifteen minutes to get over there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but when you finally reach that spot, it doesn't seem to be anything unusual at all. Damn. Uh, there's, they've got obviously some grass in their backyard, but the grass is crunchy and, and crystalline underneath all the snow. Uh, if so if I look if I look around like up or anywhere, is there anything? Oh, there's there's a lot of deciduous trees. Uh, there's no there's no leaves on them. Um, Arkham has a lot of uh, woods, so the woods are not only around Arkham, but there's chunks of them inside the, the town that, that have never been cut down. Uh, it's yeah. a lot of that. And it's just the same. Tom, I've done a, a lot of investigation with the characters, done a lot of investigation with missing children. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything in the backyards that looks like uh, is less, less snow, less that could indicate a grave or digging or, uh, it's hard to tell. Uh, why don't you do a spot hidden for me? Nope. Um, no, everything looks normal. Oh, wait. Yes, I did. Just barely. Then Ten. I didn't say what I just said. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I was looking at the wrong number. I got 60. I rolled 50. So since you passed, I'll, I'll tell you, no, nothing at all looks unusual. <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> 
What about it's the basics? From maybe to nothing. Not a thing. <laughs> All right. So uh, the down. basement. Who's going down in the basement? I'm I'm going down. Steve is going down. And Leo's going to follow him. Okay. Uh, Steve. I'm going to let them go first, and then I'll follow them. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you take a couple steps into the basement, the, the, the stairs creak. Um, of course, uh, uh, I'll remind you that everything is pretty damn cold in here. Yeah. yeah. Had the, the, the fireplace going. Uh, the basement even more so. Uh, you step down and uh, the stairs go down maybe I don't know, 10 steps and uh, there is an electric light. You pull the, the little thing and it turns on. Uh, it's a rather dim incandescent, maybe uh, 40 watts. Uh, you look around and there are piles of boxes. There are uh, some old furniture. Uh, I keep saying it, but pretty much exactly what you'd expect to be down here. It would take a while to go through it. And when you go down there, also, Mr. Uh, Mr. Webb comes over and he says, he says, I don't think there's anything down there. There's uh, some of their stuff and some of my stuff. They let me store it down there. All right. Well, and I'm, I just want to do, I'm not going to go through boxes or anything, but take a glance, a, a scan through, right? Is there anything like out recently used that it seems unusual? Are there well, other do, do a activities? Do a spot hidden. Uh, 79. Uh, so that is a fail. Okay. You don't see anything unusual. Yeah. There are no obvious oops. There are no obvious markings on the floors or curls <laughs> <laughs> uh, to hell. The, Gaping the floor, hell mouth. Um, the the floor is a dirt floor. Okay. Um the walls are uh, are stone. Uh, holding up the foundation of the house, and it's convoluted enough that you know it's not like one big gigantic room. There's a uh, there's a number of things. Uh, why don't you do a spot hidden also, uh, Leo? Yeah, Tom, I sent you a message if you haven't. <laughs> okay. You're muted. Sorry. Yeah, I missed that pretty hard. So, okay. <laughs> you don't see anything at all down there. <laughs> There's some light coming in through the little, little trap windows on the edge. Hey, That's uh, Mr. Webb, um, Gary, wasn't it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any milk in your place? Uh, there's no milk in the fridge here. The coffee is pretty stale. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let me go get up and get some for you. Thanks. Thanks. And, uh, he goes out and up. I'll go downstairs to see what those guys are messing about. Okay. Um, why don't you do a spot hidden for me? Yeah. Uh, oh, God, no, no, no. 90. <laughs> Can I look? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you were you were going down there. Go ahead. No. <laughs> wow. Great team of investigators. Yeah. We have detected a basement. <laughs> I guess he, uh, he, uh, I noticed he really didn't seem to watch you guys to poke around down here for some reason. So I sent him to go get some milk. Right. Yeah. I, so is there anything funny about the, the dirt floor? It doesn't look like it. It's fairly right. smooth, hard, compact. It's cold down right. here, too. Yeah. Even worse. There's no other there. rooms or doors or anything. It doesn't look like it. It looks like the, in one corner there's probably something for washing clothes. Go check there, see if there's anything in the drain. He's giving one of you an order, but we don't know who. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I'm going to look to see if there's anything in the drain. Like, is oh. there blood, anything, any of that other material? All right. 
Uh, if, she delivered a, if she delivered a baby and got rid of it, she had to get rid of the body somehow. There's, there's nothing in the drain. Um, but why don't you once again do a spot hidden? Okay, that one I made, and uh, uh, the second one, below the second one, but not as, not the third. Um, You do find a number of folded sheets uh, on a shelf. Uh, They look like extra bed linens. And when you inspect them, uh, they're not a stark, obviously, but there's definitely some dark stains uh, in roughly the same area on this on those sheets. So it happened multiple times, whatever it was. In all the paperwork we've looked, is uh, there a listing for her uh, medical doctor, her pregnancy doctor, OBG? It does not look like she had one. Okay. Anything about a um, a midwife then or anything? Nothing. Nothing like that. And as Dr. Stamp was looking for any religious materials or anything like that, did he come across anything? Um, you find a small cross uh, on the wall over their bed. But other than that, there's... No Bible? Um, yeah, maybe there's a Bible. Maybe there's a Bible in the in the drawer next to the bed. They're probably not Catholic then. Tom, I'm going to call the uh, the local hospital and talk to somebody in the delivery, the pregnancy delivery area, and and ask if she was ever a patient there. Mm-hmm. She ever came for a checkup? Do you have a phone? Who, heard, who saw her? Is the yeah? Is the phone line still working? Uh, there's no phone in their apartment. Okay. As soon as I get somewhere, I'll do that then. Okay. And uh, by now, Gary comes back down with some milk, <coughs> which he's put oh, into a cool. little, little pour creamer. Creamer. Just in time, Gary. The coffee's starting to get cold. Here. I'm still stood outside. By the way, I'm still outside. <laughs> I'll go back up to the kitchen because it's too cold in that basement and I didn't see anything interesting there anyway. So, Is there an attic? Uh, well, yeah, but you got to get access up upstairs in my apartment. Uh, so you'd know if they went through there. I don't think there's much up there. Like Christmas shit and stuff like that. Have you been sick at all? Me? No. No? No, I'm hearty. So you mentioned that they were, or that Miss Sun was a little unusual. Um, aside from the what looked like sleepwalking, um, what else? Uh, what else have you noticed? Well, like I say, I'm usually asleep during the middle of the day. Uh, I don't. I don't notice a lot. You know, they used to. You know, couples fight. Couples argue. Uh, you don't think nothing of it. Uh, they didn't argue all the time. Uh, most of the time, they were just fine. I think that, uh, you know, since she's gotten pregnant, he's been kind of, you know, making sure everything's okay, but he goes to work during the day. Any unusual sounds at night that didn't quite sound like arguing? No, I wouldn't say so. I mean, uh, well, I think there was a, a, a couple of arguments that I heard during the middle of the night. Uh like I see, nothing really unusual. She's uh, she was a nice lady. Yeah, and how often did you see Stuart here? Oh, the brother-in-law or the, yeah. the brother-in-law? He was here after the funeral. I remember that. Uh, Before the funeral? I don't think so. I think that you know that that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that uh, that uh, Mr. Uh, Joseph and Marilyn uh, went to visit Stuart, uh, like in uh, maybe uh, June. 
Okay. That's about, about when it was, June or July, somewhere in there, beginning of July. Did they ever have any other visitors? Oh, you know, occasionally people from town, friends. Anyone you saw repeatedly? Not really, no. So I guess they really didn't pay that close of attention. I think, okay. I think they went. I think they went up to the the hunting lodge at least once that I remember. Um, also in that June July time frame. Well, yeah, that's that's the last time. That's when they left and went away. They were gone for maybe a week. Uh, came up, and it was Joseph and his wife that went up. Joseph, there. Joseph and his wife went up there. Yeah. Uh, was, did Stuart go with them? Well, I think Mr. Stuart lives up there. Yeah, Mrs. Yeah. Stuart. Stuart lives up there. I think it's owned by them. I think the Suttons own the lodge. Mm -hmm. But you think Stuart lives at the lodge or he just lives up north? No, I think he lives at the lodge. I think it, I, I, I don't remember for sure, but I remember he said something like maybe it's in the family. Uh, maybe uh, the father owned the lodge and then the kids inherited it. Sure, sure. I think that Do you notice any uh, anything unusual between Stuart and his brother Joseph uh, in their relationship. I don't know, not really. No. What about uh, Stuart and uh, Marilyn? I don't know. Stuart seemed like he was comforting her after uh, after Joseph committed suicide. Of course, of course, like any good brother-in-law would, of course. And of course, her being pregnant and everything, that's got to be really hard. Did you notice if Stuart stayed at the house to, to look after her? He stayed here for a couple of days and then they left, yeah. Okay, so as we were looking around the house, did we notice if the couch or anything was made up? It wasn't. And no extra linens downstairs. Mm -mm. So unless he slept in the bathtub. Did uh, Stuart have a car? Yeah. Yeah? What kind of car? Did you see it? Uh, an old Model A. Okay. Yeah. That's quite a drive, too. That's like, uh, what, 250 miles up to Banga. A long drive, yeah. Is there a garage on the property? Uh, no, they just park out front. Okay. So we've looked everywhere. Pretty much. Except the attic and and uh, and Greg's room or uh, Gary's room, but that's not really within your. Yeah. All right. Oh, do I, think... I get any sense that that Gary is in all this conversation? Any sense that Gary's lying? Well, do a psychology. That's a good call. Role. Psychology rolls, right? Yeah. Been talking a lot. Do you mind if I roll as well? Hard success. Sure, go ahead. Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> hard success. Yeah, he seems legit. He's got the demeanor of a musician. Extra legit because I rolled a five. Ooh, <laughs> you wasted that five on that roll. I know. That's my first he's so legitimate, he squeaks. Oh, that's my second roll. Yeah, he's he's very legit. Okay, fair enough. I don't think we need to. You could hand him a saxophone and make him play. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for your help, Gary. You've uh, you've been a lot of help. One one last thing, Gary. Sure. Um, you said when they left, they weren't in any particular rush, you said? They just kind of were there just on their way out? I I, I can't really guess. I, I, I wasn't that observant of the whole thing. They gave me the key. They said just to make sure that, you know, uh, that I don't let anybody in, especially a bunch of lawyers. And, uh, and, and <laughs> I, I assure you, we're fine, upstanding gentlemen. Did they have any luggage, by the way? Yeah, they had some luggage. Okay. Um, I, I I walk back in. I kind of wipe a bit of blood that's dripped down my nose, and um, I just go. Anyone got the time? Anyone? Is there a clock around. Check my pocket watch. By now, it's probably about eleven thirty. I'll say. Just in game time, it's eleven thirty now. Just wait, so. <laughs> uh, well, we haven't. Yeah, we haven't found her yet, so I guess I better. I'm just gonna ring my firm. Is there a phone around here? No, not in the house. There isn't a phone here. <laughs> um, so it sounds like there are a couple of things we want to do. We want to 
Uh, the doctor wants to talk to the hospital. Ricky needs to talk to his firm. And I think we might want to report back to Dr. Herod about um, what we've found so far. Pretty smart before we head up to Banger. Yeah. Well, and make sure that's, he really wants us to take on the expenses of all of us heading up, heading up there. So should we head over to Dr. Harrods or should we head to Steve's office? Let's, let's, office? I would say let's swing by the hospital so that uh, the doctor can ask his questions. Yeah, gotcha. and Ricky can swing by his firm and we can meet up wow. all together at Dr. Harrods. Well, I, sure. nah, I, I just need to find a phone. Oh, you just need to find a phone? Well, Come with probably, us. probably okay. one. There's probably a public phone in one of those strange boxes along the street. Yeah, probably. I'll just go. I'll just go to one. You can also use the phone in my office at the hospital. Exactly. We'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. All right. So let's assume also that you guys have exchanged contact information with one another so that you can rendezvous at certain points. And yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so where are we going first? The hospital? Uh, Dr. Yep. Uh, Burke's office? Yeah, we're, we're all going there. All right. Uh, so you arrive back at the hospital. This is Arkham General. Um, uh, you make your way up to Dr. Burke's office. Dr. Burke, what would you like to find out? Uh, well, I'm going to call uh, maternity and see if there's any record of her ever coming for a well baby checkup or anything like that. And if so, who was her specific doctor, uh, which should be relatively easy for them to find. Um, and then I'm going to go down to the laboratory and ask somebody I know there if they could quickly analyze what's on the sheet. Okay. And I'm oh. going to use his phone. <laughs> All right. So and if they need a little, uh, if they need a little incentive uh, to to help them do the analysis quickly, I'll provide that. Okay. Um, what you find out at first is that she came in for two appointments very early in her pregnancy. One was to find out if she was pregnant, and the other one was just sort of a follow-up. Uh, it was Dr. Randall Baxter. Uh, you actually know him. Um, five minutes of talking. He, he almost doesn't know who you're talking about because it happened months and months ago and she never came back. And he just assumed that she maybe, they maybe moved somewhere. Mm -hmm. Another doctor. Or maybe she had a private practice. Um, the analysis... Well, they, uh, they try to analyze it. Uh, there's definitely compounds in it that seem like, you know, mucus. And uh, uh, there are traces of blood. Uh, but for the most part, they don't have a clue of what this stuff, this stuff could be. They could do a complete chemical analysis, but that's going to take a lot longer. I'll have to send it over to Miskatonic to the, uh, the, the science labs. And uh, yeah, one of the doctors uh, becomes very concerned because if, as you say, this might be a discharge of some sort, we might be looking at some disease that's causing this. And we should probably try to find this woman. And since you're already looking for her, Yes, we are. Keep Could you fun. get the lab at Miskatonic to speed up the test for us as quickly as they can? Well, we can do it. You know, it's freezing cold. We've got to get the sample over to them. That's going to take a bit. Um, I'll do it. Well, they'll do what they can. Okay. Probably will Would it be, be any faster for us to drive it over? Um, possibly. But they they got to make phone calls and hmm. they'll take care of it. But you probably won't get any information back until tomorrow. Okay. Right. So you guys are all up in uh, Dr. Burke's office. Uh, Randy. I pass the phone to Ricky. Yeah, Ricky. There you go. Make your phone calls. Ah, cool. Yeah, I, 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 I dial in 
my uh, firm. All right. Uh, shit. What the hell's the name of the firm? Baker Wheeland and Tiffany. Law firm. What can I do for you? Uh, it's it's Ricky Rand. What's up? What's up, Ricky? Oh, did you deliver that damn letter? No. Uh, we got. I got to the house. Uh, bumped into some uh, nice uh, fellows, a couple of detectives, and that. But um, basically, uh, she hasn't been there for a couple of weeks, according to the tenant upstairs. And we may think that she's gone to a lodge, so it might take me a few days. Oh, I find that's uh, you know your that's your job. You gotta find a give her the damn letter. Ah, uh, but I kind of just come back. Nope. I don't really want to get into this. Don't be such a pussy. Uh, okay, boss. Okay. I'll see you in a few days, I guess. All right. Keep keep me posted. Keep me posted. Click. Okay. Fucking pussy. <laughs> I don't think we should promote that little asshole. <laughs> he's never going to make partner. Um, All he's got to do is deliver a fucking envelope. And... <laughs> I told you it was too much for him. Uh, well, boondoggle the main. Well, my boss is curious ever. Like, you know, I don't even know what's in this letter, guys. Just told to deliver it. Well, should we open it? No, no. No. Can't open. Uh, that's only a problem if they can tell it was opened. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's under my, it's under my protection. It's only for, it's only for Miss Sudden herself. Are you sure? It's really cold. It's a really long drive. If this is just like uh, your dead uncle left you a hundred dollars, you sure you don't want to find out what's in there? Honestly. I just want to get this over and done with, so no, we're not going to open it. Fair we're enough. Gonna, we're going to find Miss Sutton, and we're going to get this goddamn job done, because then it suits all of us. <laughs> and again, letters are, a lawyer with integrity. Letters are accidentally steamed open all the time, just saying. <laughs> Sorry, it's under my protection. Don't really know you guys that well, so. So, oh, that's Steve. He's the face of honesty. As long as we're here in the office, why don't we just call Dr. Herod? As you are sitting in the office, I'd like the people who weren't talking to do a listen roll. I think I got a normal success. 41 under 50. Fail. Okay. Those of you who passed, as the others are, are discoursing and chatting, um, you hear an odd noise, like a, almost like a, a musical instrument, like a horn or a, a flute. Um, and then you realize, and it, 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 it sort of, it's very breathy sounding. And uh, Dr. Dr. Burke, did you pass? Yeah, um, you suddenly turn around and you open up your curtain uh, looking outside and you can see that not only has the wind picked up, but it's snowing like crazy. It's a freaking blizzard outside at the moment. Great. Yeah, calling Dr. Herod sounds like a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure I want to head for Maine right today in that. But uh, let's call Dr. Herod and well, that's fine because give him an update. We won't get the analysis back from Miskatonic until tomorrow anyway. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we dial up Dr. Herod. Um, and you get uh, Miss Sw Mrs. Swain. She's like, uh, Dr. Dr. Herod's office. Yeah, this is Steve Carroll. I work for Dr. Herod. I wondered if he's available to take my call. You're the, you're the detective. Um, he's with a patient right now. Uh, is, it, is it important enough that I interrupt him? Or uh, uh, when, when will the session be over? I can call back in a little bit. Uh, she says it should be done in about 15 minutes. Okay, I'll 
and he's free thereafter for a bit? Yes, for the evening. Okay, then I'll uh, I'll call back in 20 minutes or so. All right. And I'll do that. <clears throat> who the hell is Dr. Herod? He's the one who got us involved in the Suttons. Yeah. Why is... <sighs> have you got a letter from him, or...? No. Are you sure? No, I don't have any. The only letter I have is the one from Marilyn Sutton. Uh huh. From Dr. Herod, you mean? No. Oh, oh. Just checking. So you don't actually have an address to Bangor? No, I, I don't. I was just. You don't? Oh. No. Well, well, we'll trade you an address for a look at the letter. <laughs> Other than that, it's going to be a very long, cold walk, Mr. Ren. Well, in the wilds of Maine, in the teeth of a snowstorm, wandering around, plaintively asking people you pass, do you know where the Sutton family live? And hopefully not freezing your ass off before that happens. Well, honestly, all I'd have to do is ring my firm and they could probably tell me where the... Um... Do you think here? if they knew that, they wouldn't have told you that to begin with? Well, but they, by they, all means, bring hey, me on. Hey, I'm just assuming they own, I'm Okay, I'll ring him. I'll ring him. I'll ring my firm. Who are you going to oh, ring? The firm. My firm again. Really? On for a moment. Baker, Wheeland, and Tiffany. Law firm, what can I do for you? It's Ricky again. What the fuck do you want, Ricky? All right. Do you have any other addresses for the, um, for the Suttons? No, you're supposed to deliver to the, what? You said they weren't there. It's the only address we have. You're supposed to figure out, find out where they went. Ask the neighbors, ask somebody, for Christ's sake. Come on, dude. Yeah, okay, but... Right. I just want to know. I'm not meant to open this letter at all. I meant to just keep it. No, don't open the letter. Why would you want to open the letter? It's from the parents. Well, these four, these four guys with me want me to open. What? What four guys? What? What the hell have you gotten yourself into, Ricky? <sighs> They're investigating the sudden or something. I don't know. Look, I don't want to know the details. I don't want to know the details. Just deliver the fucking letter and get it over. With. I'm trying. I'm, I shouldn't have fucking run. I just hang up. Did I tell you? What did I tell you? <laughs> he wants us to tell him where the woman is that he can't find. If we knew that, we would have just sent him to that place. I know. Well, I know. Well. Okay, turns out my firm doesn't know where the lodge is, so I'll find out myself. I'll just go back to the place. That'll be an interesting. Huh? Ooh, did you look outside? I pull open the blinds. Yeah, I did. No, I don't... Yeah, yeah. I'll wait. I'll just wait. It's fine. Do you have any idea how long winter is in New England, Ricky? This could yeah, be... Yeah, I know. And this is February. Yeah, it's just February. This is, it's just getting started, man. And and Steve, if I recall correctly, I think your car will fit the four of us comfortably. Yeah. Uh, but Mr. Rand, we could make room or he could try to hitch his way up there. There's a- I'm sure that? there's lots of train and bus service in the middle of this uh, lizard. Ricky, not to mention, it looks like your firm's mildly annoyed with you, to put it lightly. Don't you really want to help us out? Don't you really want to help us deliver this letter? There might be info in it that'll make our jobs easier, makes you look like a rock star, and one day you get a partner, a nice corner office, and no more milk runs to deliver letters. Or, conversely, how bad it looks when we uncover a murder and you were seen to obstruct the investigation of such. Ugh, messy. 
Rick, Ricky, Ricky, come out in the hall. Let me talk to you. It, it, it would be unfortunate if Steve dropped to his friends how unhelpful your firm was. Mm. I'll open the, uh, the door and kind of gesture. Yeah, I, I, I go with Professor Stamp. The, the, other, the other two are, I'm getting a bit peed off with them right now. Look, Ricky, I'm, I'm a pretty relaxed kind of guy, you know, but Detective Carroll and uh, Mr. Lopez, well, I mean, you know, Steve's a cop, you know, I mean, he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't ask you to do anything completely illegal, you know. So, anyway, they, they have a way of getting what they want in the long run, is what I'm saying. And if you just play ball with them, I'm sure, you know, they'll take care of the uh, the details, make sure you don't get in any trouble. Um, you know, you could accidentally forget, you know, drop the letter, or maybe you fall asleep and somebody picks it up out of your pocket, or who knows? I'm sure they can work it out. No risk for you. They get what they want. You get what you want. We all go up to Bangor, Maine. We bring the broad home. You know, happy days. What do you say? All right. You know what, Professor Stamp? I, I will open the letter, and only I'm reading the letter. Sure, but maybe let those guys advise you on a way to do so uh, without it being obvious. Cause... No, I'm... I know. <laughs> I was born on this... <sighs> And a rough area, man. Now you, a... you're a lawyer, I guess. You, you, you know. All right. So you go yeah. back in the room. No, I'm staying out in the hallway. All right. Take it over the letter here. Yeah. Oh, in case that I'll watch eagerly. So how are you going to open the letter? Are you going to tear it open? <laughs> no, I am. Um, I I've got. I'm gonna. I know from my old days how to get it nicely opened you do. without making two all right yeah what are you like 23 <laughs> no, no, i just like to point out to the I'll rest of you my, by the way. four of us are watching a lawyer commit a crime. <laughs> and there's an old statement that comes to mind about you know we could all hang together or ricky we could all hang separately and there's four of us I'm hey, the lawyer I'm, who's right. breaking his trust to, to, to stamp to stamp because he's the only he's the only one I kind of respect <laughs> at the minute. I go if there's any information in there that you may need to know, I'll tell you that information, but only the important information. Yeah, sure. How are you going yeah. to know? I'll just what's stand important. over here by the door to make sure none of the other guys walk out. Go on. Okay. Kind of look over his shoulder. Yeah, I yeah, pretty, I'm gonna try to carefully like uh, do a luck roll. Yeah, I just passed fifty out of fifty. Okay. You're you're afraid of a few points that you're going to rip it, but yeah. uh, you go very slowly. You, you, go, um, you you eventually open the letter, and you can see that it's just on plain plain uh, stationary uh, you unfold it you read it and then you you sort of your eyes roll up into your head for a couple of seconds and you look over at uh, professor stamp and you just you just say oh for christ's sake here <laughs> you hand, and you hand it to uh to stamp yep uh, he sees this did you read that Dear sweet Marilyn, we heard from Robert and Martha that Joseph had passed away. It must be awful. Why haven't you contacted us? We have sent a number of letters via the post. We hope you are all right. Martha told us also that you were expecting a child. Honey, you can always come back here. I know the time of year is terrible for traveling. We've been trying to find a way to reach you. That's why we hired this lawyer to track you down. Please at least tell the lawyer you are all right, and we will get the message back to us. He will get the message back to us. Jamie and Mike got married last week at the Horton Chapel over in Monksford. It was a lovely wedding despite the snow. I know how hard how hard life can be. Sometimes it's all you can do just to get up in the morning. Please come home. Your father and I are very worried. We love you, baby. But... So in other words, nothing at all. Well, that was rather anticlimactic. I hand it back to him. <laughs> that was... I open the door and walk back in the office. Ah, it's nothing, guys. Just, a, just her mother asking her to come home. Mr. Rand, your firm must really dislike you. <laughs> yeah, 
Well, I've only really just started, um, so you know. So, where uh, where are they from? I mean, where where were the parents? Is there a, a is there a return address? Return address? Uh, no, it's just an envelope. However, Ricky, do you remember? Um, from what uh, your boss, Mr. Parker, told you. You do a, an idea roll. Yeah, I would. Where the hell is my dice? Step there. Um. Yeah, I pass. Seventy out of eighty. All right. It was the Moody family, which is apparently what Miss Sutton's maiden name was, and they live on a hog farm in El Dorado Springs, Missouri. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too far out in the middle of nowhere. They're all snowed in. There's no way they can travel all the way to Arden. Got it. And there's no way that she traveled all the way to Missouri either. So I'd say banger it is, but maybe after the storm passes and after we get back from the university. It's got to at least have been 20 minutes. Let me call back, call Dr. Herod. You call back, you get Miss Swain. She uh, she hands the phone over to Dr. Hare. Uh, Mr. Carroll, how are you? Uh, what have you found out? Good. It's been a productive day, Dr. Herod. Um, we've got some interesting news. Um, I'm, we are quite convinced after looking at the police report that uh, uh, Mr. Sutton actually was murdered. Um, Oh, yeah. Not suicide. Um, oh, and we think that the, uh, that Marilyn and the brother-in-law have gone up to Maine, uh, to the family lodge up there. Well, that might make some sense. I don't know if she's gone up there with, uh, with, uh, with the steward to the spot. I, I don't know if there was anything. Did you find out if there was anything to the uh, idea that uh, they, they were having an affair? Well, um, there nothing concrete along those lines. The witnesses we've talked to so far suggest that they were um, behaving like they should, not as a couple. So are, are you then planning on going to uh, drive all the way up to Maine tomorrow? Well, do you... Uh, I, that's why I'm calling you first, sir. Uh, would you like us to follow up all the way to Maine to yeah. try to track her down? I want to make sure everything's okay. I want to make sure if he's a murderer that you crying out loud, my goodness, you know, bring him to justice. I don't know what you, what you should do, but, you know, how are you going to get there? Are you going to drive? You're going to take the train? Well, uh, given the fact that it's a lodge, uh, we're going to need, I, it's out in the countryside, so it's not like a train is going to take us right up to the lodge. We were thinking we'd have to drive. So it would take you to Bangor. You'd have to get a, a um, I don't know if you've got a taxi. Bangor's a big city. Well, right, but we'd need to hire a car or something to I have a private into the car I'll drive us up okay. now, we have cars it was just a matter of getting there in the winter is part of the question well you've got to be careful you know look at this storm outside oh my god it's, uh, it's a horrible oh my god to have another five feet of snow maybe by tomorrow who knows well I you're footing, footing the bill Dr. Harrod so I didn't want to <clears throat> head head off on a fairly large journey uh, without your okay. There are so many strange things in this story. In this, uh, in this case, uh, please keep it both together. We, we we certainly will, sir. Thank you. Right, good luck. Yep. We'll head out in the morning then. Excellent. Thank you, doctor. We'll talk to you as soon as we can. All right, so what do you end up doing for the rest of the evening? Well, gentlemen, I think that uh, we need to pack for a journey. Uh, what is 
bound to be a very cold journey in a 1924 Model T or and and or your luxury liner there, Doctor. Um, and we should get started as soon as we can in the morning. Rolls are quite comfortable. Oh, that would be. Uh, I, I'd love to ride in your rolls. <laughs> Again. Uh, do we want to wait until we get the analysis back from the university before leaving? That might not be first thing in the morning, of course. Yeah. Good point. That might be really helpful. I have some friends there. I mean, I can go to the university tonight and see if I can uh, pull some strings, maybe. Try to get the... Well, and the doctor doctor knew the lab technicians and stuff. You gentlemen are welcome to come to my house for dinner and stay the night. I've got plenty of extra room. Thank you, sir. I could do that. Yeah. That sounds uh, better than trekking over to the university. The, well, Dr. Stepp, I was going to have you do an idea roll, but uh, okay. it, you don't have to. It, it seems like on a night like this with the blizzard going on, uh, people probably have left early. Yeah, um, there's probably nobody working in the lab. Right? That's that's not very good news. I probably would keep that to myself for the moment. Okay. No, I just turned off the. I just turned off the. He thinks we can't hear him. Yes. <laughs> he turned off the video. He, he didn't turn off his camera. Said he didn't video. turn off the uh, the mute. That's Sorry video. about that. That's okay. <clears throat> you hit the wrong button. Uh, <laughs> well, on the uh, you know. Realizing that kind of bad news and deciding not to spoil the party, I'll just uh, agree to go to Dr. Burke's house for dinner. That sounds fantastic. All right. Can't believe I got to deliver this pointless fucking letter. Well, so let's say that after that, uh, there's a, a slight let up in the storm. You all managed to get over to Dr. Burke's office. I mean, his home. Uh, it's a very nice home. Uh, he makes sure that, uh, that you have a very nice meal and he puts you up so that you can all sleep there. There is, the the storm continues to rage outside. It's cold. Well, it's not cold inside the house, but you can hear the whistling and the, and the howling of the wind outside. The next morning, what time are you going to get up? The roads are going to be icy. They're probably not going to be plowed. And I don't know if they plowed them back then, but let's assume they did. It probably won't be plowed until 8 o'clock in the morning. I probably habitually get up by 6 at the latest anyway to okay. have coffee, start breakfast. You have a very nice breakfast with very nice coffee. Um, right about 8.15, and you've been watching the plows clearing the snow, throwing it to the side, getting ready. You've packed all of your things. Uh, Dr. Burke, the, the phone rings. Hello? This is, this is Penelope Swain, uh, the doctor's secretary. Yes. Uh, uh, there's something wrong. I, uh, I, uh, I left the doctor last night, and uh, I've come back this morning, and I can't get into the house. Um, he told me last night before I left to call you if anything unusual happened. Oh, well, uh, we'll come over if you like, but should you call the police? Well, no, it's not like that. I just can't get to the front door. What do you mean? It's all snow. Okay. Please, please come over. It's very cold. We'll come and assist you right away. All right. There's a coffee shop just down the street. Wait down there. We'll meet you. Okay. It takes you... 10 minutes to pull all yourselves together and to drive over to Dr. Burke's up in, in uh, uh, uptown. And as you approach the house, now there is the, probably another two feet of snow fell last night. The snow has been pushed into banks on the side by the plows and everything. But as you come up to the, um, the doctor's office, there are banks of snow that go almost all the way up to the roof that are pushed up against the house. The front of the house is completely buried in snow. 
Wow. Wow. That's uncanny. What the fuck is this? Well, let's grab some shovels, guys. And there are always shovels. <laughs> yeah. Do the other houses look uh, like they've been covered in a similar manner? They've got a little bit of snow, but nothing like this. This is the only like one. Something <laughs> dropped a snow pl- a, a snowstorm right on the front of this house. Like the whole front end of it just got buried. Yeah. Well, this is a bit weird. Um, How about the back end? Is there a back entrance? Uh, there is. However, that's all snowed up too. Hmm. And there's no walkway to get to it because it's all buried under the snow. Tom, oh, um, let me just, uh, just to be. Ricky, clear, you're used to digging. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm happy to start digging, but is the snow? Does it look like it was dumped over? Like a big amount of snow was dumped, you've, you've that seen, it was like in 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 drifts. It looks like it's in gigantic drifts. Okay. Yeah, it's got a slope to it. You know? Right. Yeah. Um, so you start digging, and there's a definite icy crust on the outside that you break through. But once you break through that, you're able to start the. Uh, you're able to start digging. Uh, Mrs. Swain, uh, she is at the coffee shop down the street, uh, which maybe you drove by and you waved at her. Uh, she figures you're going to dig it out, so. Go for it. Um, so you dig for 30 minutes. It's cold. You've got your mittens on. You've got your hats on. Uh, and you finally get up to the door. And the door has got a layer of ice on it. You can see what that the it's okay. not thick, but it's definitely free frozen. Yeah, we'll clear it away enough so that we'll be able to open and pound on the door and call for Dr. Heron. Okay. Uh, you, ha- you, you realize that the, the, the lock itself is somewhat frozen, but with a, a couple of little pushes, uh, it, it snaps in the cold. Uh, it opens up into the, the foyer where you had seen the day before, and everything is twinkling with uh, little crystals of ice. Uh, what? As if the, temper- as if the, the fireplace had gone out, and everything just just froze in the middle of the night. Is is the fireplace out or the, the furnace off? Fireplace is out. It's freezing cold. Uh, you can all do uh, constitution rolls. Uh, Fifty four out of sixty. That's nice. Fail. Fail. Uh, if you fail, I would like you to take one hit point of damage. Uh, from cold, it's 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 feels like it's forty below zero in here. We want to be uh, above the value as a fail, correct? At the, above as a fail, correct. Okay. I'm glad I dressed in my winter clothes. Right. And what was the hit? One, one hit point of damage. You just subtract that from the HP. Um, you can see that Doctor Herod's office door is slightly open. Um, you're all standing at the door. What would you like to do? I I, I go straight in. That's <laughs> right. uh, uh, Ricky, do a dex roll. Zero, zero, zero. <laughs> or Ricky's like, I'm going to go see uh, the office. You take three steps and you go flat on your back uh, on the ice. You crack your head against the, uh, the ground. Uh, do a one d two of dam. Uh, do a do a roll. Uh, the one d two. One. <laughs> All right. So you take another point of damage, but you're like motherfucker. <laughs> I suggest you put some ice on that. That's, yeah. <laughs> you, guys realize, you guys realize that the floor is coated in ice. Some guys have all the luck, Ricky. Don't worry. I'll walk in a little bit more gingerly and carefully, trying to make my way over to the doctor's door. You get to the doctor's door, and it's it's frozen in place. Uh, you have to kind of 
jimmy it and, and shake it to try to get it to open and it scrapes and it scrapes and it scrapes and it finally pops open and what you see is dr herod sitting at his desk directly across from him is the window and the window is wide open and dr herod has his hands out like this and there is rind ice as if something blasted him from the window and he looks like he's frozen solid he is light blue and his eyes are white they're mm. up into his head and i think that's where we're going to end it for tonight all right you guys could do sanity rolls though if you want yeah that's a good good way to end right that, is that because it's a corpse or because of the situation? It's so incredibly bizarre. First one through the door, I failed the sanity roll. Yeah, I, I failed as well. I got a 95. If if you failed your sanity roll, um, well, if you failed it, do an intelligence roll. No, you don't have to. Don't, don't do it. Just take a, do a 1d4 of sanity damage. Four. And if you passed it, just take one point of sanity damage. Well, I take four. Oh, okay. wow, I take four as well. Yeah, I take five. You're Only shaking one. Anymore, but you're not, you don't go screaming. I have ice water in my veins. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, I'm already at 36, Sunny. <laughs> you're a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's true. All right, so. so what was our look at your morality score. <laughs> on the sanity roll? How much damage? 1d4, if you, if you fail. Oh, 1d4. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I did fail. <laughs> okay. Even I failed. Okay, how much damage did you take? Oh, uh, three. Oh, damage or sanity? Well, it's, it's sanity damage. All right, yeah, lost three. three. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, our players included... John Lundman, Ian Christensen, John Hicks, Michael Rodriguez, and Josh Harwood with myself as the keeper of the secrets. We're currently producing up to five shows a week with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. The costs involved in the show are provided almost entirely by our patrons. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. If you'd like to support our show, visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar or two a month helps us a lot. You can find a link in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Punch that bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. And follow us on Twitter at ITD. No, at ITD Podcast. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Mm -hmm.